So welcome everyone to this week's podcast with Nikki and me, Dave Smith. Today we have a great guest and another important discussion I can't wait to get into. We have Dan Mannion, the multifaceted co-founder and CEO of Donut. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So Nikki, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. It's a timely topic and case in point is you and I have been sort of living this remote work experience, right? And finding common ground as we collaborate into company between our firms and doing this podcast and we get to speak with super interesting people. And it, I think it fits with, with Dan's passion and work that he's been doing and what he's been about, which is awesome, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, it's funny you use the word multifaceted because um, as everyone tends to do before they have a meeting with someone these days, I did kind of do a little LinkedIn creeping on Dan <laughs> uh, prior to this uh prior to this podcast. And um, you know, Dan, I noticed that um, you work as an adjunct professor at, um, at Brown and you know, trying to weave into the discussion. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head, it would be interesting to see how you're advising kind of the next generation of people who are graduating, entering a remote workforce in times when those of us who have worked in one don't even have a grasp on how to work. So if you kind of lend your perspective throughout, I think that would be really interesting for um, people not only who are at that stage in their life, but also people who are going to be managing people who had never really worked in a, a physical work environment before. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, great question. So I'll, I'll try to weave that in. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and nice, nice segue as well, too. I, I guess we could start with Dan. Please, you know, I what Dona does is so interesting, but I would really like to have you sort of give that background and context of, of Dona and, and yourself. Yeah. Um, thank you. So th thanks again for having me here. And um, I guess I'll start with a little bit of myself and how that led to the founding of Donut. So I've been doing startups for, for over 10 years at this point, largely leading leading product teams. And those those companies have ranged anywhere from educational technology to cloud security, hardware to software. So a pretty a pretty uh, broad spectrum of types of startups. And through all of those experiences, I really felt the power of culture on the team, um, both the good and the bad. I sort of felt this, um, you know, it could really elevate a team to, to make a performance best or frankly, really bring a team down. And through my experience and talking with other people, what I really realized is that um, preserving, especially some of that early day goodness when you're really small and everything just works and then you kind of 5X inside and things might go a little sideways. It's really all about the relationships and the relationships and connections between people are frequently effortless when you're five, 10, 15, 20 person startup. All of a sudden you're a hundred people or a thousand people and what was completely intuitive at 5, 10, 20 is like, frankly, it can be a big mess. Like, wh wait, wh why do we have a biz dev department? What are they doing? Like, you know, why are we building this thing over here? Like, y you used to be completely in sync and now you're kind of all crosswise. Mm -hmm. So that realization made me also realize we don't really have any tools, platforms, products that, that help us with that um, in larger organizations and that help leaders with that, sort of scale that um, early day connection to really any size. Um, so Donut was really founded with, like based on this idea, like can, can we build something that actually helps facilitate the creation of these kinds of these bonds and relationships? And there's an example I use actually when I'm when I'm speaking in front of a um, uh, a group. I often do a show of hands on this to kind of illustrate why this is so important. Um, I'll ask how many of you in the room have had somebody you work with that you just like have complete trust with, like you know they've always got your back. Like you have an emergency, you can go to them. The whole room raises their hand, right? Like we've all had that experience. And then how many of you have had someone that you work with? like things are a little off kilter. You need something from them. You like spend a half hour crafting the right email. What are the words I need to use? Like, I don't want to step on toes or like aggravated. The whole room raises their hand. 
And that is a, an enormous difference in organizational trust, efficiency, and success. So for me, it's how do we get way more of the first and way less of the second? And it's, it's all about that underlying relationship you have with the person. So how do we build that foundation? So then all day, every day, when we're working with each other, it just sort of comes second nature. Yeah. yeah. And, um, go ahead. No, no, saying that you're, you're totally right, you know, and, and strong and collaborative teams, you know, are the lifeblood of every organization. So I would yeah, I'd love to kind of hear more as to how Donut is sort of helping, you know, your, your, your employees and your customers sort of navigate uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a, a few different ways we help people connect. Um, but the, the essence of, of what we do, just to give a little context, and then I'll share how different organizations use this and employ it. Um, but we, we have a very deep integration with Slack. Um, so our, our users are, are, and our customers are, are typically heavy Slack users. And we have a way of basically making an introduction or a connection in Slack, where our Slack integration opens up a direct message between you and someone else in your organization or you and a group of people in your organization. And what frankly started as an experiment a few years ago, you know, we, we didn't know if, if our Slack integration donut put a couple of people together would they actually talk on Slack? Would they actually meet for real? I can now actually many millions of introductions later confidently say this actually works. We can put two people together that have never met that work at a company like IBM and say, hey, here's here's your connection for the week. Grab coffee or jump on a Zoom and people will get together and form a new relationship and maybe learn something more about the organization, learn something more about a different department. Um, so we have a number of different ways of allowing people to, to set that up and what will trigger those introductions. Um, for the most part, it's set on a rhythm or a schedule and people can opt in or out to, of different programs. So a smaller company might just have a general program that's like, let's all meet each other. Um, it, it runs out of a Slack channel and we see some really, really creative channel names, things like donut be strangers, lots of donut puns and don't <laughs> worry, make new friends, um, things like that. And those are just, you know, people connecting with each other, anybody in the team, but then at a larger organization, we actually see dozens of these programs pop up. So Maybe different geographies have connection programs, but then different teams have connection programs. You know, the marketing department got so big that we don't all really know each other. Let's do a marketing one and let's have the prompt be when we meet, let's like talk about our, our marketing strategy. Um, we've seen uh, employee resource groups create ones, interest groups. So now your mentorship programs too, not connecting mentors and mentees on a specific topic. So now you're actually injecting some some purpose and common interests into these connections. Um, and the things that our, our users say to us are things like, you know, now I have someone in another region. And if I need someone there, like they can hook me up. Like I have someone to lean on, like in a totally different office that, and I never knew anybody there. Or I have a wider understanding of the business because I've met so many people. Or I feel like I can be more successful because I have all these these strong relationships around me. Um, you, you mentioned relationships time and time again, which of course is the cornerstone of the, the whole principle that um, Donut was built on. And when I think of relationships, I kind of put on my past hat of being um, a manager of alliances across organizations. And I know alliances and partnership ecosystems are becoming more and more important as one organization is bound not to be able to fulfill many of its you know, customers' demands. Um, so I'm just curious, does Donut facilitate collaboration across organizations who have partnered together and who, co who work on going to market together and building products together? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think there are two ways in which um, people, people connect using Donut across different organizations. Um, one is so so donut the way we connect people it runs it runs out of slack so one is which companies with a deep 
partnership are often in the same Slack workspace and might be running a program like this. And actually, you know, if it's a joint venture kind of thing, they actually would use this to connect people um, who are maybe on, on a, a big team working on an integration. The other way, which is actually really, really interesting is there are quite a few communities out there that run their whole operation out of a Slack workspace. So whether it's, uh, you know, um, CTOs of Chicago or, you know, a student group uh, at, you know, Harvard Business School or whatever, um, there are actually a lot of people with those types of organizations where it's actually not a company. It's just people with a common interest who work at different companies that use Donut to facilitate those connections and, and relationships. Yeah, that, that, that's really encouraging to hear, especially as learning from each other, as we're all kind of uh, making the same mistakes in a, a lot of ways and like learning how other people have remediated and and um, I overuse this word, but it's the only one that comes to mind, pivoted, um, has seems to become a really vital way in which we're just kind of going about our day to day now. Um, and you know, for people who have not necessarily heard of Donut, or I'm just curious, how how do you guys go about promoting your brand? Um, especially given the fact that it seems such a uh, an awesome tool for virtually anyone to use now. And you know, I know your user, then your number of users has um, you know, increased um, by multitudes. Um, so I'm sure word of mouth has spread. But you know, what are the other ways in which you you go about um, promoting the value? Yeah, um, it's 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 frankly pretty uh, pretty organic and word of mouth. Um, you know, we we uh, we certainly highlight a lot of our customers' successes. So we 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 try to tell tell stories and share um, some of the outcomes that that our our customers have with Donut. Um, we we also have a strong partnership with Slack. Um, you know, they have a Slack app directory, which, which we are in and uh, um, frequently, frequently featured in um, being one of the more widely used Slack integrations. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we just try to lots of word of mouth and try to be part of the conversation about how to make work better. And you alluded to the fact that we, we have definitely seen a surge of, of demand while we are all working from home. Um, so I can say a couple words about that, which is that, you know, when we when we built Donut, it wasn't just for remote teams, right? People were actually getting coffee together or getting Donut together or going to lunch um, who work in the same office. We did already have, before this pandemic hit us, we already had a little bit of a cult following in the remote work world um, you know, some of the biggest names in, in remote work, like uh, Envision and Automatic, who makes WordPress and Zapier, uh, who are all fully remote, really large companies, um, are all donut users. So we already had that following, but we also had a lot of people using it in person. But the moment the entire world flipped to be working from home, I think there was this collective um, panic, just to be blunt about it, that that showed up that we saw in our numbers that everybody's like, how are we gonna stay connected and not feel isolated and, and keep people talking with each other? Um, and that actually led us to like overnight change some near-term roadmap things. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh wow, like we need to serve a, a way bigger population in a way, in a very different way to serve their remote working needs and actually built a number of things very, very quickly to, to, to serve those needs. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause I, I, I've been wondering, you know, how sort of, you know, your, your recommendations, you know, for, for customers and, and, and everyone has sort of changed, right. During this sort of, uh, this, pa this past month or so, you know, of, of being sort of sheltered in place and, and stay at home and, and everyone now working from home, you know, how was sort of your, you know, your guidance, you know, changed over the past uh, few weeks. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, we, we were, we were a team with an office. Um, we did have one work from home day. So the transition has been a little easier for us. We kind of knew how to do it, but frankly, we've learned a lot from our fully remote customers and started adopting some of the things that we saw them, them doing and are recommending it to all of our customers. So one thing that we observed with 
teams that are fully working from home is that being deliberate about process and documentation matters much more and matters in a much smaller organization. You can get away with being a small startup and being in the same room and kind of shooting from the hip on a lot of process stuff. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you're working from home, you, you really can't get away with that. There's no water cooler. There's no like, hey, let's jump in a room and discuss this thing. A lot of those things that you take for granted are just stripped away from you. So when it comes to connecting people, all of a sudden it gets really important to realize, okay, there's, there's no, you know, there's no water cooler. There's no kitchen where we're, you know, filling up our coffee together. There's no happy hour or game night or whatever we're doing. Like mm-hmm. that's all gone. How can we replace that with some sort of a structured way of, of connecting? Um, one of the, one of the things we built overnight, uh, for, for this exact purpose is I mentioned donut can introduce people on a, on a regular cadence. The most popular prior to this was every two weeks. So every two weeks, meet someone new in your organization. The moment about a month ago, the moment this, everybody's working from home, we just got flooded with requests for, we want an option for a daily donut intro. Like we want, we want employees to get an intro like every day. And it's just going to be a five or 10 minute, Hey, hello on zoom with a different person in your organization, but you're not walking in the front door saying hi and seeing faces every day. Right. So how can you do something to create that feeling of connection when you don't have it naturally in your office? Yeah. When it comes to connections, the, the one positive, um, I, I guess I could see from trying to make connections remotely is that it, it sort of breaks down the silos and some of the clicks that appear just naturally as w- with any, you know, whether in school or in life in general. And I've, I've heard stories of, and I've found myself actually interacting more with people I may not have just naturally gravitated towards because I didn't know about them or they, maybe they had preconceived notions about, like, no, I don't know if um, I have anything in common with her or I should work with her. So I, I see those connections coming up um, more and more. And I, I, I do think that's one of the kind of bright spots um, you know, in the midst of all of this. Yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting observation and uh, agree completely. One of the things that we've seen is in, in hybrid environments where there is an office, but there's also remote workers. That's another way that these clicks and silos can form there can be a little bit of us and them. And what's interesting about this moment is there really isn't any of that, right? It's, it's, we're all in this together. We all have to figure it out together. Sort of levels the playing field um, and, and sort of breaks down those, those walls. Yeah. The, the thems being the remote people are now like, you know, welcome to our world. (laughs) No, you guys. Exactly. Exactly. It's actually something that we, we observed years ago with our customers is that, the fully remote companies on some ways seem to have it figured out better than the the partially remote or hybrid companies where there is a thus the us and them and the remote people are frequently actually second class citizens because the structure of how meetings are run or how the day is run is not really designed for them and you know you've probably been in on on one side or the other a meeting where four people are in the same room and there's two people on a call. Well, it's much harder for the two people on the call to get a word in than the four people in the room, especially when you start jumping up and drawing on a whiteboard and they can't see it. There's just so much disparity there. Whereas all of a sudden, if you're six people on a Zoom, well, you're six people on a Zoom. You're all you're all working with the same tools all of a sudden. <laughs> That's a good point. So our our worlds have merged so much that yet yeah, even the, uh, the, the non-remote who are now remote or now, you know, so probably not feeling some sort of empathy, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A huge amount of empathy, I think. Absolutely. So, Dan, you know, it's been, we've been talking in, in these podcasts and asking this this one simple question. You know, with all the altruism that's going on now, you know, in uh, from companies across the board, across the globe, in sort of you know, responding to COVID, you know, with their employees and customers, what are some of the things uh, Donuts is doing, you know, to 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 sort of support you know your employees and and your customers during this time? Yeah. Uh, so first, I, I love that question. Um, I want to acknowledge every company is being affected by this differently. So so every company is in a different position 
to be able to pitch in and help. Some are really, really hurting. Uh, we're fortunate to be in a very strong position and um, frankly have a lot of people that, that need our service. And we feel some both responsibility and pride that we get to, to help people. Um, of course, also acknowledging all of the people on the front lines are, are really the, the true heroes in this and all the people doing essential jobs. So I want to acknowledge all of them, but, but we, we do feel proud that we can help folks that are stuck at home, working from home, uh, be a little happier and, and feel a little bit better about that. Um, with that said, there are a number of things we've done for employees, customers, and the community um, in response to what's going on. I'll also say, you know, decision making has had to speed up so much um, in this environment. You know, we have to just see an opportunity. Okay, let's do it. Versus, yeah. you know, there's no there's no way to have well laid, you know, roadmap and plans for for an environment like this. So anyway, some of the examples. I'll start with the employees. Um, we we made work from home optional very early and mandatory pretty early as well. Um, so we were really, you know, before it was clear this was truly a pandemic, we were actually already talking about it with our employees. The first message was frankly me telling the whole company, hey, I'm, I'm watching this. Like I've got my finger on the pulse and we may have to respond in some way. And that was when we were, you know, weeks before, that was probably in February that I was saying that. Um, now, when we finally did switch to work from home, um, two things I'll highlight. Number one, we wanted people to be as comfortable as possible. So we gave everybody a work from home stipend to, buy, to have monitor, to buy, you know, webcam, mice, desk chairs, um, all that kind of stuff. Second thing we did for employees is we actually just uh, bought every employee a, a face mask, a reusable face mask and sent it to, or we asked if, if people wanted them and everybody raised their hand. Um, so just providing that as a way for when people have to go out and get groceries. I should add, we're based in New York City. So um, our, our employees are largely in New York, which is obviously hit very hard by this. Um, so providing all of our employees face masks. Um, so making sure that we're really putting their, their safety first and that that's clearly a priority. From a customer standpoint, um, there's a few things we've done. Number one is we, we built a handful of, of new features very, very quickly. Um, I mentioned the daily donut option. We are about to release a Zoom integration uh, now that pretty much all um, donut meetings are happening over video conference and Zoom is the, the most uh, popular one among our customers. So that's going to make it really seamless to get on a Zoom call. Um, two of our features that make it even easier to connect are well, will be the Zoom integration as well as we have a GCAL integration. Integrations like that are normally paid features, but we've made them free for our customers, for all customers uh, through May 31, so that everybody can just benefit from being able to connect more easily. And the final thing we did for our customers is we have made Donut, uh, all of our paid plans free if you are a nonprofit, an educational institution, or a community. Um, free for 90 days. So we know that those, you know, nonprofits who are, are do, doing hugely important things right now for communities are also really hard hit, right? When the economy goes down, their their fundraising goes down. Um, so we wanted to, to be as supportive and helpful as possible with those. Now, the last thing that I'll, the last category is um, our community and what we've done there. Um, and we are, proud to be doing a couple things in that front and uh, are always looking for, for more, um, more opportunities. So one thing is being in New York City and a huge shortage of personal protective gear in hospitals. Um, a New York City, another New York City startup and, and CEO um, jumped in and organized a project called One Million Masks, which is trying to raise money to get one million masks to frontline workers in New York City hospitals. Mm -hmm. So we made a $10,000 donation to that cause. And uh, it's it's been awesome to, to be able to contribute in that way. Uh, the whole team is proud of that. And, you know, we've gotten photos back of, of boxes of masks being delivered to hospitals. 
Um, and then another thing that we're participating in is um, a company called Easy Cater that does sort of that we've used before for for company meals and um, business catering has a program called Feed the Front Lines. We used to do a, a weekly team lunch where we would buy everybody lunch um, in the office. We're not doing that anymore, but we're putting that money towards this Feed the Front Lines program, which is providing food uh, for the people that are on the front lines and actually, you know, responding to this pandemic in, in the hospitals. No, Dan, those are all um, really inspirational you know, just topics and ideas. And that's why we really like to end these sessions on kind of an up note so that people across the board can see what all the different corporations are doing to help others, their own communities. This particularly hits home for me. I, I lived in New York for almost 15 years and um, I still kind of live there because um, I was in the process of selling my condo and clearly not doing that right now. Um, so uh, you know, as you're describing that, I, I kind of got a little nostalgic and you know I, I really appreciate kind of hearing all those efforts that you guys are doing. And you know, Dave and I fully recognize that this is not just a moment in time and that the ripple effects could keep Per, you know, could keep persisting for years and years and that, you know, we're not just going to suddenly at the drop of a dime, I'll go back to the world in which it was before. So, um, you know, we, we do ask our guests, so would you be open for us kind of checking in with you in like, you know, three to four months and kind of seeing where we're at then and kind of getting your commentary on um, how things have changed and, you know, what you're similar to this, your insights as to uh, what you think uh, the future will hold. Absolutely. Um, I'm happy to. Dan, thank you for, for joining us today and um, and for your time. Thank you for having me and, and for all the uh, really thoughtful, thoughtful questions and, and great topics. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. And next yeah, time, we definitely lot. have to have you bring your guitar. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> let's jam, man. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.